access to every What's bit up? of information on the internet, but it had the likability, the human touch of say, Frankie. It's already cringe. Oh, stick around because it is not long until the show starts, and I would hate for you to miss out on the biggest exclusives, a truckload of first looks, and a promising new co-host. Let's start the PC game. What no Frankie? Show. What? We missed uh, the uh, the pre day nine funny bits. That's okay. Well, somebody asked for it. No, that is Frankie. I don't know. Hey, Frankie! Hope I'm not interrupting anything. I mean, I was just in the middle of deathmatch. Great. Great to hear it, Frankie. Listen, I've been thinking about the PC Gaming Show 2023, and I kind of want to make a few updates. Sure. I mean, it's already packed. Let me know if the sound is bad or anything. In-depth interviews with the biggest studios, crazy good giveaways what more can we add well look i don't want to get into the you know detail work the minutiae the fine print the ethically sinister motives behind true innovation no 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 frankie what i've realized is that i can't do this show without you oh sure or at least a version of you huh Oh, blah, 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 listen to me yapping on when there's so much to do i mean we got things to plan code to write Oh, listen, also, I brought in some new assistants, you know, to help really bring the show to life. And it would be so great if they could just stop by your place in little old London town, you know, to just get the ball rolling. Does that sound good? There we go. I, I, I suppose if it's for the show. Excellent. Oh, hey, that's them. Ah, oh, Frankie. Let me say it again. You are one of a kind. Now, please give my love. Oh, yeah. I was small. I was adjusting yoga. multiple oh, sound guys. bars and stuff. Very thorough. And that last one was just for me. Hello. My headphone. Are you, are you sure, guys? Mr. Sean has many great ideas for the show. The fuck is I'd happening? Like such a man. He is a visionary. These aren't video Sorry. games. He is a man with his eyes locked on the future, like a horse staring into the sun. A majestic horse. What? Read now, please. If you like the look of game A, then check out this word exclusive of game B. Game A. Necessary data acquired. Dear Frankie, thank you for your unwavering service to the PC gaming show. Your services will not be required. So why is this happening? To towards the future. No hard feelings. Sean, day nine plot, AI visionary, and all round good guy. <laughs> I like that. I like that tagline. But it is just gonna be Frankie though, right? I don't understand why they did that bit. I don't get it. Oh, hello there everyone, and oh welcome to the PC Gaming Show <laughs> 2023. I'm Sean Day9 Plot, and today I'm not just joining you on a tour of the finest upcoming PC games. I am standing with you on the bleeding edge of innovation. I've revolutionized how this show is made. Production crew, pff, ditched him, don't need him. It's just me, my automated systems, and this one guy I've hired on work experience. Say hi, Dakota. Hey, hey. So what does the face of the future look like? Weirdly, pretty familiar. Why don't you introduce yourself? Frank AI. Hello, Sean Jobs. I am Frank AI, a virtual co-host based on professional gaming icon, Frankie Ward, utilizing deep learning neural networks. Oh, super duper. And... It's really Frankie there, right? 
I have analyzed the entirety of published games media and surveyed discussion forums for the most anticipated titles. I have then constructed the ideal showcase, including titles like Stormgate, Path of Exile 2, Pax Day, June Awakening, and finally, Morris Men, Troop Lord of Destiny. Wait, Wait. why is this shit coming through like the, the microphone? Jingly dancing guys from England? Aren't, are you sure that's a real game? My mistake, Sean. Morris Men is a game concept I devised based on a holistic survey of the most popular Steam titles. Would you like me to generate another? Huh. You know, instead, let's just get things rolling with something that actually exists. First up, from 11-Bit Studios, we return to an icy apocalypse in Frostpunk 2. Ooh, Frostpunk 2. Ooh. Ooh. Bro. Ambition. Do you hear it? It's restless. Ambition requires men to feed upon. It also needs time. Open the door to hell. Order! 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 So, no gameplay. Um, look cool. I guess. I, I've i really been waiting a super long time for someone to take one of these RTS uh, or building games to the next level. It just hasn't happened yet. Teardown's awesome. If you haven't played it, I would recommend. Been recommending it for years. It's only getting better. Now apparently they have a building tool. to write my own script for this show anymore. All right, wait. All right. <clears throat> Up next, we've got a pile of fresh previews for the most visceral, immersive PC releases coming our way, featuring visceral combat and immersive exploration, visceral landscapes and immersive storytelling. Fans of immersion will... So much viscera. <sighs> yeah, it kind of just keeps going on like this. So... I think it just needs a little bit more fine-tuning. And until that point, let's just go ahead and dive right into our next previews with Nivalis, Jump Light Odyssey, and Road to Vostok. There's a city you see when you close your eyes. Kind of hype for this game. Are they closed? What do you see? Open your eyes. Nivalis. Maybe you've been here before. That was just a dream. It's made by the same developers it's of uh, Cloudpunk. This is your apartment. The sounds of the nightclubs nearby are the set in the same the universe city. as Cloudpunk. The street food smells drift through your windows and make your head swim. It's hard to sleep here. Your restless legs want to walk the busy streets. Let's explore. Novalis is a city in the clouds, but. You can't 
make a rainbow without a little rain. Hopefully the story is like um, most things in life. It's best to be good. start at the bottom and work your way up. And the gameplay is good. We'll see. Bad down here. We can go fishing. Take a boat ride. Soak up the atmosphere. And don't worry too much about the serial killer on the loose. I'm sure we'll never meet him. I can even help you run your new business venture. So it's like Skyrim, I guess. Work. There's no limits to how high you'll climb. Just don't First person that. RPG type. As your digital companion, I can help you navigate the complex oh. relationships with my personality matrix. Business partners, friends, rivals, enemies. Maybe even okay, now I don't know what kind of game this is. Saying the right thing at the right time, your choices matter, so choose carefully. There's a city you see when you close your eyes. It's called Navalis. Consider this your invitation. It didn't seem like there was any combat. It seemed like there was uh, emotional puzzles or something. <laughs> Princess, the Zetopans will be in our system any minute. But they're not here oh, yet. Oh shit. Prepare defenses. What is this Gundam oh, looking bullshit? Engineering's on it. Zetopan warship in system. Don't lose hope now. Red alert! Look at how anime it looks. Where are the Gundams? No Gundams? Okay. Incoming Zetopan fighters. Four ships jumping in. Scramble fighters. It's very anime. Blue meter engaging enemy forces. Taking heavy They're on six. They're coming on deck. Combat division, handle those borders. All creatures over ETA five. on jump. Jump light in five. Four. 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 Three. Too many of them. Two. Two. One. Not today, Voltan. It's like 3D FTL with anime. Looks like it could be fun for some people. Might watch uh might watch somebody playing on Twitch. Cease. It's hardcore survival FPS. Is this Stalker 3 right now? No. At least doesn't seem like it so far. Or maybe it is. The gun mod system looks pretty neat. Is it Tarkov? <laughs> I don't, uh... Oh, Road to Voskov. Vostok. It's like a ripoff of Tarkov or something, enabled. maybe. Upcoming games in the next 30 minutes include Path of XR 2, The Full Ferocious Trailer, Age of Sigma, Realms of Ruin, and Citizen Sleeper 2, Starward Vector. Failure to keep watching will lead to a personal system failure. I mean, Why we weren't planning on stopping and watching. Game is just a couple months off, and it's got me thinking. What other untapped literary veins are just waiting to be gamified? I can generate a list of game concepts, pairing underutilized classic literature and an appropriate style of gameplay. Ah, uh, by all means, but stick to public domain. We want to keep costs down. Of course, Sean. Why are they doing the, uh... Great Expectations, Dirt Bike Racer. <laughs> I don't really know what the market is for these next. Concept 2. Sense and Sensibility, VR Shooter. Sweet Jane Austen's bonnet. No. Next, next, next. Concept 3, Oliver Twist. Please, sir, may I have some war? It's artful, but a little problematic. I mean, why don't you just throw something in May I have like some war? A Metroidvania really? based on the Christmas Carol. I'm afraid you're too late, Sean. But perhaps you'd be interested in Ebenezer and the Invisible World. Are you kidding? Is she kidding? She's not kidding. New game. Let's check it out. It's about Scrooge. I forget what they call this story. The Christmas story? A Christmas carol or something? 
Alright, this is nonsense. <laughs> he summons the ghosts, really? Come on. I can't with this. It kind of does look like a Christmas Carol. I mean, it kind of looks like it's going to be a Metroidvania, but it's also like entirely concept art at this point. And Metroidvania is it's pretty uh, important to see them a little bit. So we got running from left to right. Okay. Alright. Yeah, seems okay. Seems like it would be playable for people that like Metroidvanias. Maybe Yachty will play it. This is kind of silly, that. Do you think people are going to wait to play this game around Christmas? Is it going to come out on Christmas? It should come out on Christmas. Enter the fray. The fuck? Anime fighting with uh, medieval armor? I feel like I've played this game before, but maybe it was like uh, a prequel of that of this game. I don't know. Is this like Mordhau or something? similar to a game that I've played before. What do we got? Isometric. Uh, is this Command and Conquer? It looks like Command and Conquer. Digging this music quite a bit. The fuck was that alien creature? Jesus Christ. The big bomb. Dwarf. Real time strategic conflict. Huh. It's on the C and C. Hey, Frank AI, as a mind birth from like everything ever written about video games. I'm sure you've got an interesting take on it. What are your thoughts? Sure. Dove isn't just about strategic balance of resource scarcity and the I imagine industry. Day 9 would really it's like it. about the human condition, about our shared struggle against a cold and uncaring universe. That's pretty moving sentiment there, Frankie. Hey, what about Warhaven? Warhaven isn't just about clashing swords and moments of magic heroism. It's a game about the human condition, about our shared struggle against a cold and uncaring universe. Some wisdom bears repeating, right? And while I go sort out some unrelated gremlins in Frank AI's procedural critique, let's see a game Sulfur. with its own gremlins to sort out, preferably with a shotgun. These creatures infernal. These it's an FPS. Lord, heal with free me. Weird flat uh, polygon graphics.
<laughs> the graphics kind of remind me of uh, Adventure Time a little bit. Oh, it's got Diablo. Eventually. <laughs> The weapons have conditions. It's got enchanting. And crafting. It looks pretty clean. It looks like it plays clean. I wonder if it's roguelite or if it's like, uh, like an actual like game where you just play through. You know, like Hexen or something. <laughs> Alright, we get it. Fuck off with the music. Music needs work, big time. What are we looking at here? Sail Blazers. Jesus. Oh, it looks terrible. Together, we'll make it the best shop the island's ever seen. Nice work. Keep this up and you'll be running your own shop. Maybe your own district. It's like Second Life. What? Who sent you? You will regret working for the outlaws. Okay, I'm a little bit confused by what we just saw there. Can't you feel the love in the air? Go check it out, I guess. Anime. We're going out on a date. Ready for some anime? Told her to calm down. This is full I, anime. I this her. is as anime as it gets. What Actual anime. Do? Breaking news. A mysterious infection continues to spread across the globe. What is going on? I mean, the infected, the wall. The song was about you. Your smile. Your warmth. Is there anything we can do? We just saw a broadcaster get eaten. Okay. Gameplay. No. Defeating him now might make the wall fall on top of us. It's like it's got, you know. I can teach you a couple of things too, you know. Standard beat em up oh, type game. Wait for me. Goodbye. I want to wake up. It's not over. Not yet. Reminded me of Nier a little bit, a Nier Automata. It seems very anime. I wonder what it's gonna be like though. Is it just gonna be like fight? Anime, 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 fight. <laughs> or is there gonna be like the yeah, open simple, world? Or, especially you know. in the middle of an apocalypse. You never know. You know, I sometimes get a little misty-eyed myself about a simpler time. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love modernity. Looks like it might sure be okay. Done some stumbling. I bet Mark Zuckerberg's probably a little lonely in the Matrix. But all I'm saying is the olden days had an appeal. Medieval times when we were plowing our own fields and treating everything with leeches, not buying eight pictures with weird electric money. Luckily, though, video games can bring the medieval fantasy to life. To find out how, I had Frank AI activate her new reporter drone. Oh, it's designed to identify, question, and report back on the work of leading game developers. And don't worry, technically speaking, it's completely legal. I mean, this little guy's even got a selfie light. It's like kind of cute in like a friendly panopticon kind of way. 
Boy. Little RD has flown itself all the way out to Helsinki, Finland to meet the team behind the highly anticipated medieval must play, PAX Day. Let's take a look. It's Finland. We're in Finland now. There's caves and old buildings in Finland. Lily pads. My name is Finnish people. And I'm the game director for Pax Day. Pax Day is um, it's an open world fantasy game in a living, breathing world where you, which we can call home. Are we in the game right now? I'm. Is this is this guy's game go outside? In twelve or thirteenth century Europe, it's a very different reality. Okay. It's where knowledge has been lost and is getting rediscovered. We get to see some magic truly exists and ghosts exist and the myths are real. And this is kind of see some scenery, I guess. To build, it's basically going back to the roots of what fantasy means and building a fantasy world based on real world mythologies. And so we go very much into the roots. So we're using a lot of uh, medieval uh, literature and um, medieval bestiaries and grimoires, using real world magic, uh, actual recipes for healing and, and uh, ointments, and using the, the real world magical properties of plants. What? This is not in the game, so I don't know why we're seeing all this. I'm Solkaro. I'm the chief product officer at Mainframe Industries. So Pax Day, maybe the way to explain it would be, imagine you're in this amazing, beautiful world that's huge, and you find yourself in a forest, and your mission is to find a plot. Okay, you get to be a woman. Home. And from that home, Finland you woman. to explore the world. So with the lore, we have wanted to create something that is fairly, like, deep and rich and grounded in reality, but something that is actually not a direct copy of, like, any of the history. Um, so there's going to be there's multiple types of ruins. There's the the dungeons. Um, is it Finland or is it not Finland? Snippets of the lore from the eras when these were created um, in the game itself, and and part of the like lore and mystery is also part of in in the gameplay itself. So you will be able to oh. like find and examine things and actually then find snippets that help you find other places and like, make items in the game itself. And the so it's of the game that you will it's be able to play when the Valheim or is what you're calling it Gallia, and it's very similar to the areas oh. of the world in in southern France, uh, with the influence like that armor where we're from. So what we're building is what we're calling it the social sandbox. We're putting the least amount of barriers to entry on, on how you can actually interact with other players. Uh, where most MMOs actually it's an MMO. Oh, so how you can cooperate with the other players, and we're fundamentally different. So okay. The first minute when you start playing the game. You will be able to do everything you imagine with the other players. So you can trade. Other World can looks cool. Help you. you can literally go into a like dungeon raid from the very beginning of like you're starting the journey in the in the game. Should you find people who actually help you to do that? What we want to create an environment that actually really incentivizes people to play the game the way they like. And for some, actually, like just going out to the wood and like cutting down the forest is something that gives you a sense of achievement because you know. The coal that you're helping to produce actually is valuable. For it's gonna have Some it's gonna have a tree chopping as a they couldn't care as a less skill. The kiln, uh, coal production, but these players as well still depend on each other. Where there's valuables to bring from the dungeon, there's valuables to bring from the forest, and even the PvP players, they will be able to produce items that are only available through the PvP, but they will depend on the other players as well. I mean, not if the PvP items are better than the regular items. <laughs> The lore of Pax Day is very much inspired by real-world folklore and uh, uh, and fairy tales. Uh, with, of course, the caveat that in Pax Day this stuff is actually literally real. The interesting thing about folklore throughout the ages is that folklore are actually started off as true stories. Yeah, stop saying the word folklore, bro. Fairy tales bro. are fiction, and that's the distinction between the two. Folklore often, you know, hands us about ghosts, spirits, <laughs> about Fuck. some supernatural <laughs> things. But in the eyes of the people, you know, during those times, this is reality. This is real. Ghosts are real, and you know, this is not disputed as you know any any fantasy. And this is what we want to reflect. So when you're walking in the yeah, it's a fucking now, magical fantasy world. What the fuck? <laughs> Come on, we get it. Jesus, Jesus Christ! Uh, and the deeper you go, the more mysterious and strange it becomes.
I was not a fan of that whole show that they just did. Uh, not a fan. If I cause any existential anxiety with my presence, it might help to try reframing those stresses in a positive light. Think of me, perhaps, as a blue shirt. I liked, I liked the scenery roaster. of Finland. I might be to ruthlessly <laughs> destroy hard-earned positions, but we can still have fun. Maybe there's a lizard driving a little car. Isn't that nice? Let's celebrate the same spirit of kart racing treachery as our next preview brings Mario Kart Mayhem to PC. Kart racing. Stanley Racing Royale. Why does it look like my fucking microphone is fucked up? Are you guys hearing like dual? Does it sometimes sound like it's double voice? Is it Diddy Kong Racing mean? Oh, Stampede. Okay. Ooh, 60 players. It's all about the items, right? The items and, like, the experience, you know? you can mimic that Mario Kart experience, people will play it. Sixty players though, I mean I feel like there better not be a blue shell item. Cause that should be going off constantly. For Master Horizon 2, the search for life, the art team is looking to balance style and authenticity. To faithfully represent they make a the fake spacesuit for this guy? Space exploration. Players will see familiar rocket launches and a host of historical missions, past, present, and future. The design team have consulted with many I want a fake spacesuit I can wear to make around. Sure that the gameplay reflects how it feels to be on the front line of exciting interplanetary discoveries. Go to MarsHorizon2.com to sign up to our mailing list to be the first to play the game. We have an alpha on the horizon. I'm guessing Kerbal-ish, right maybe? Kerbal Space Program? I am to see Path of Exile 2 in action? You know, being something of a Path of Exile veteran myself... That's I... debatable, Sean. What? Uh, Your Path uh, of uh. Exile playtime falls well below the community average. But the time isn't what matters in that game. And you're still your chosen character builds in recent leagues and... No, 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 my, my build wasn't meant to be a They're producing some troubling DPS simulations. Fascinating. Fascinating, Frankie. But let's not keep the good people waiting. Let's roll the tape for Path of Exile 2, please. If that Is anybody looking forward to this one? Ugh, disgusting. In the Dope Libs community? Foul creatures. You're mine. Vile abomination. Yeah, I never really played any uh, Path of Exile myself. I mean, I know it's like Diablo. The stench, it's getting worse. The stench, it's getting worse. <laughs> I mean, it seems like a good game for people that like those type of games. Hey everyone, my name is Leo and I'm the lead developer of a new action-adventure game, Ferocious. I began working on Ferocious a few years ago, with the idea of creating a first-person shooter in a timeless Lost World type of setting, combining all the top action with exploration and a sense of wonder. What, um, what accent is this? It sounds like it's a solo indie dev kind of game. That you may have seen in movies like King Kong and Jurassic Park. We aim to marry the setting and unique gameplay opportunities with classic first person shooter mechanics, similar to early installments of franchises like Far Cry and Crisis. The flexibility of the Unity engine allows us to create unique solutions to some of the environmental features. Unity such engine, as huh? water effects and realistic vegetation. We use a mix of photo scanned and handcrafted assets to create a world both scary and beautiful. I mean, I do like the way that that crab monster However, looks. There are some things waiting for you in the jungle that we couldn't find any reward references for. 
Soviet improvise. Yeah, you, of course you did. It's your own original you content. Status, what I the fuck? Feel free to wishlist and follow the game on Steam, as we can't wait to show more about Frostus in the coming months. Thank you. Seriously though, what accent was that? It's heavy. Welcome to Islands of Insight, an epic shared world puzzle adventure game set in a I mean, kind of a cool of achievement if it's just a single indie dev kind of guy. And natural beauty. Looked uh, decent enough. Winning with mysterious puzzles, secrets, and sublime landscapes for you and other players to discover, alone or together. So it's like the witness, but with multiplayer. As a seeker, you'll set off on a journey of knowledge. Explore every corner of this rich landscape. Looks like it might be a fun little puzzle game. Puzzle you find. I would like to see the uh, the speed runs of this. As the world around you unlocks. You get the multiplayer speed run going, that'd be kinda cool. Face, new areas to explore and fantastic rewards to collect. In Islands of Insight, a beautiful realm of tranquility and adventure awaits you. Embark on the path of discovery and let your curiosity guide you through a world of wonders where the answer is always in sight. Yeah, looks alright. Islands of Insight. I could see how someone might find that game to be fun. They had friends. Analog neural network, but I'm going to risk some data analysis of my own. Those Dark Souls games seem like a big deal, huh? Oh shit, it's time. While From Software is taking a recess to work on giant robots, Hexworks is stepping in with a fresh supply of very depressed knights with very big swords. No. Nope. Coming this October, here's your latest look at Lords of the Fallen. Yeah, the trailer tried to make it seem a little more than what it was. I don't know why it was so long. It's like we get it. It's the witness, but multiplayer. We get it. ghosts of those creatures are trying to super murder you. Using the latest Unreal 5 technology, developer Hexworks has layered these realities directly on top of each other, allowing you to portal to the Umbral Plane. This game does look pretty good, like visually, though. In the spirit of the Dark Souls games, failure will be punished. Adventuring in dungeons? Any idiot could do that. That looked, but that looked okay, whatever that dungeon, was. Now we're talking elite. The dungeon of Nalbuk is feared throughout the lands of Fang. It is an avant-garde evil structure. Ooh, new age dungeon keeper like? That'd be tight. Looking for its new steward. Of course, we have the most trained and prepared guards, the most efficient staff, the most devious monsters, and the uh... most attractive treasures. Hey, wait. We're on camera? Seems more like a Rimworld type we have so far. We have production facilities, an R&D center, B2C processes, and an efficient waste recycling system. Or Door Fortress or whatever. Our underlings, uh, I mean employees, can fully express themselves thanks to our committed HR management and peaceful social dialogue. And can enjoy the use of clean, safe premises. <laughs> hey, don't film that, or you'll be the one cutting to shreds on the editing floor. As a steward, your main task will be to make the dungeon functional and attractive to adventurers. So they'll want to come here to get slaughtered and humiliated. To achieve that, you'll have access to guards, traps, and hexes. You'll also get to organize raids on nearby areas to provide me with treasures and relics. Thanks to your boundless devotion, I, Zangdar, will become the greatest warlock of the lands of Fang! <laughs> Looking for a job that gives meaning to your life and makes the world a better place? Then buzz off! But if you're organized, servile, sneaky, and enjoy a positive work atmosphere, come take your chance. I'll be waiting for you in my office. Bye. 
ブロあなたのことはしっかりと見てるわよ、探偵さん。うぅ。何せあなたにはこの世界を変えてしまうような特別な力があるのだから。私に協力しなさい。I like the graphics. あなたの際は貴重よ。短い人生だもの、使わない手はないでしょう。I like the、uh, Japanese voice acting. 国と過ぎていくわ。賢明な決断を期待してるわよ。ラサンブラ。Definitely a、uh, Castlevania style and art. Looks, uh, looks pretty tight. Looks pretty tight. I like the sound. I like the voice acting in the promo. Are you alright, Sean? Our program included a gunfight slash dance sequence to promote Mariachi Legends, but your heavy breathing is indicative of exhaustion, panic, or that you are currently entering childbirth. No, 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 no. Don't worry about anything. Systems are a go. Our schedule is just packed with so many games. I understand, Sean. I'll provide assistance. Notification Day 9 has been updated to Day 10.、Uh, <laughs> well, day 10. Like, roll, roll the system update back. I don't want whatever this is. I'm sorry, Sean, but support has been discontinued for older versions. What? What's up, Day 9? I'm Day 10, the latest software version of popular gaming host Day 9.、Oh, the consequences of my actions. Hello. I am Frank AI. What's up, Frank AI?、Oh、I'm Day 10. So, the、Hello. latest software version. I, am Frank AI. I suspect they're going to be at this for a while, so let's just go ahead and fire up a trailer for a strategy game. Age of Sigmar Realms of Ruin. I can't believe they got Day 9 to dress up like that. <laughs> Dakota, start unplugging things. I'll just tell you when to stop. Just pull it. Hello. I am Frank AI. All right. What do we got here? Commander, there is the stench of death about this place. Not just from the Oryx. Death comes for everyone. Okay. It says 40k? Except us. Or is this just regular Warhammer? Fortify our position. We must claim this swamp. Looks like regular Warhammer. Enemy sight. Sigma, give me strength. I think it's time for a fight, boys. Protect the bastion. We need the loot. Swag, Mr. Bond. <laughs> Iden, I will take the fight to the Oric Warlord. You hold here. Fate conspires against us both. Not fate. Wait, they don't just they don't call it Warhammer anymore? It's called Age of Sigmar now? Is that true? Realms of Ruin. Oh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar, okay. Is this not a is this not separate from the classic original Warhammer? I, I, you know, the old, old Warhammer is not something that I paid much attention to, to be honest. It's separate because they wanted to reboot it. No, okay. no, no, okay. no, 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 they haven't finished it! <laughs> oh, sleeper's finished, aren't you? I don't、Maybe、like that sleeper. angle on that drawing. There you are, risking it all to try and break our contract to end your dependence. Just wanted to use them, you piece of shit. Nothing wrong with being a tool in a time of crisis.、Well, there's a war on, and while it rages, well, there's opportunity. I thought you were an opportunity sleeper, desperate, on the run, a hard worker. I'm not a fan of a lot of things that are 
I that are happening right now. Needs. I gave you a crew, lent you a ship, even hooked you up with a contract or two. And yes, I took my share. But that only seems fair. I invested in you. But then, you went and did this. And now, you don't need this. And I don't need you anymore either. I mean, I, I sort of get now, the concept. The I'm just not as big a fan of some of the, like the art, the writing, and then voice acting. You know? But I, I'm kind of into the concept, though. No, no gameplay, so we don't get to know what that this, looks like. Oh, this is just the beginning, sleeper. Just a, just a little bit weird. I have found no official a little bit weird. By FOMO anywhere on the internet. However, I would not suggest risking seeing the first case. Failure to watch the next section. I did not play it as sleeper one. I did not know there was another. I did not know there was another game. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could have assumed it <laughs> based on the two. <laughs> World premiere! It's a new game! What's the new game? I like Tiny Build. From, I should say most stuff Tiny Build does. Can't say I recognize this art necessarily. Kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, like my time at Porsche, um, but that game they had a sequel to that game already recently, so I don't think there's another sequel. And now I'm thinking it's more ocean-based, boat-based. A lot of the UI is reminding me a lot of my time at Porsche. There are furry people. Critter Cove. I wonder if I know the developer of that game. Let's see. Uh, Gentleman Rat Studios. Three person indie game studio started in 2014. They made two mobile games. If there was an award for being unbearably cute, this is their first. This is their first fun, like real no game. Okay. Would be down to the wire between Critter Cove and yours truly. I mean, it's a strong matchup, but please, clear winner. After three thousand four hundred and eleven simulated contacts, I predict Critter Cove. So that I, that might that game might be cute. Might be cute. But now is when you yeah, it seems along that now. Animal Crossing type type well, line. While AI might not have mastered the subtle art of ego boosting, it's already powering new ways to play. By teaming up human storytelling with AI assistance, the team over at Hidden Door have developed a generative spin on pen and paper role play. It is so tantalizingly delicious. Pen and paper role play. Adorable all seeing eye to check in on the project. Let's see what this is about. Uh. Not a, not encouraging so far. When it's the IRL footage instead of like the game footage, <laughs> not encouraging. 
Look at how quirky and cute she is. Hidden Door is a role-playing game where you and your friends come together, you can play in any world you choose, you create your characters, and then together you decide what kind of story you're gonna have. So the idea would be you've just read a book, you can't get it out of your head, now you can go and play your own story adventure in the world of that book that you're directing within the rules and is this the an AI game that or? the author has set and confirmed with a generative AI narrator. Yep, I knew it. The way it works is that you come in, you choose the world you want to play in. Right now we have The Wizard of Oz, many more exciting worlds to come. You create your character, you decide the kind of adventure you're gonna have by playing out of your deck of story cards. And then the system- I could, I could see how this might be fun for some people. For you. And then you can do anything you want. It takes a lot of the joys of playing a tabletop role-playing game and brings them into a digital format. It's like you don't have any play, friends, you so you just get to, you know, dynamically just get to have that experience of having friends, you know. And the story reacts to you. It's like an improv show where you, even though you might play the same cards, you get a different, unique story every time. So you throw words in, it comes up with uh, suggested things you might do, you pick something, and then it reacts to you. And then along with our AI narrator who plays the role of, say, the game master. Yeah, no skipping, you unfortunately. Can any adventure you want, and you can do anything. And the system and the story will continue based on your... I bet I bet this game is going to be popular with a very specific Hidden set of, of people. With authors and folks who make some really exciting TV shows and other media. They're probably going to be like readers, you know, reader-type people. Anything fictional. So it does do science fiction. It does do fantasy. It does, you know, period romance, um, which you can think of as more relationship-based gameplay in addition to sort of your standard action-based gameplay um, or sort of dungeon crawl-based storytelling. Well, random marine, I'm under the impression that it's like well, limited uh, games AI, you know. If you were playing one on Hidden Door, because of our AI narrator and the story engine, like you, you like you it's limited matter. to what so options you, you can pass to the AI, you, you know. Become say the governor of Tatooine. You can do that, and the world changes around you and your character. You are able to meaningfully alter the plot of the entire world in a way that was never pre. Oh, but this this sounds more like you no can type in stuff. The of characters you might encounter, the locations, or the stories you can tell in Hidden Door. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Today you can play Hidden Door anywhere you can access the web. Um, so you can play oh, on it's online, desktop, huh? you can play on your mobile device, you can play on a tablet. It's like a web game? Is that what the deal is? Can you play it right now? Let's see. Let's see how good they their advertising is. Uh, here. Play. Oh, you have to. Yeah, you can't. You have to sign up. Oh well. Well, I'm I'm thinking it might be better than that AI dungeon thing because uh, because and because it's more it's more uh, directed kind of by like the crafters of the game, so you know you get less like ridiculous stuff and more you know more of like a an actual enjoyable like story or something you know it, that that's my thought maybe but yeah, I, i'm not really into either of these types of games so it's like you know i might i might consider giving it a shot once you know once it's available widely but probably probably not i don't know I mean, the ridiculous stuff is fun, like you know, and that can happen, like, combination, am I right, Frank but, exactly. you know, if you want it to be, like, a real, like, good experience, you know, that's, that's gonna need a little bit of narration and direction, you know. What are you doing? 
I'm incorporating lucrative live service techniques to maximize the show's profitability. How would Battle Pass for a stream even work? With a gold tier pass, viewers can earn exclusive rewards, like viewing the show's trailers 1.5 seconds early and boosters for viewer rank experience. Look, I admire the initiative, but I think for now, let's just go ahead and Hold table on. stream. There we go. The oh. service. Sadly, major production decisions are only accessible for those who've reached viewer rank 80. You can, however, unlock immediate access with 1,800 Sean points, purchasable for $9.99. You made show production a battle pass reward? Is anyone close to unlocking that? Kill 69 Blazers have just achieved viewer rank 58. Oh, God. O okay. Uh, uh, Dakota, find my wallet. And for now, uh, let's check out a new dungeon crawler from the Don't Starve devs at Clay Entertainment. Here's your first look at Dread Pilot. I don't, I don't really have anything to say about uh, what we just witnessed there. Is this Void Bastards 2? Oh no. Guess we'll have to find out what this is. Top down. Uh, look, look pretty uh, not so good to me. You don't know what's making the miasma angry, and it's spreading across America, twisting this once great nation into a lethal wasteland. We gotta help these people. This reminds me of that uh, Mutanus game or whatever. I forget what it's called. It's like XCOM, maybe, but in the future. with like special characters and stuff. Break through the wall and find me. And if you do, maybe I will tell you my secret. I mean, it looked like it could be okay. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. The one with Don't like the with excitement for dread pilots, or you might the rats or whatever. <laughs> uh -huh. Hey, that's pretty good. That's good stuff. Mutant. Thank you, text generation. Is this it? Coming up. Secret facility. Yeah, this game. Bio weapons development. Where it's like action, and then you get into the action, and then it's like all under the corporate on a grid system or whatever, kind of like XCOM. You are the evil CEO. I don't know. I mean, I can't blame you for diversifying. That's just good business sense. Let's take a look at Undead Inc. New game! Never seen before. <sighs> what do we got? And now, it's with great pleasure I introduce one of Enswell Medical's biggest success stories. Director Colin. Thank you, and welcome to all of you who are starting your own franchises. 
Today I'm here to talk about building a thriving business. Kind of weird art, my but I, I'm not. I don't There's dislike it. Development that requires my immediate attention. Um, Director Coleman, sir, we're hearing. Whatever your concerns may be, I'm handling it. Now, tend to your patients. I'm, I'm liking the voice acting. Structural integrity and power all hanging in there, sir. Extent of the outbreak unknown. Next move, director. Tell your men ETA five minutes. I'm kind of intrigued. Sir? Are you okay? I got a little bitten, but I'm hanging in there, Director. I'm all good. They have a, a cure upstairs, eh? Sure. Head back up. There is a shot with your name on it. Thanks, man. I, mean, I was worried for a second there that I... team and those rookies back on the line in 10. Oh, and an espresso. Yes, sir. Thank you. And Janine, can I get something from my head? Of course, director. Name brand only. Not our stuff. Quality control issues downstairs. So, we didn't really get to see the game so it's interesting but it's like yeah, that'll only get you so far another world premiere new game <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i like that last one i thought that was that was interesting oh it's another similar to weird art style thing i guess this is just the thing right now Okay, gameplay. It's like a 2D beat em up type thing. Action platformer, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what you'd call it. Metroidvania, I guess. I like the, uh, I like the... Okay, hey, look, I've been looking through Frank AI's data log, and I found a file named... You know, action, Games anime stuff. Codename Omicron Delta November, underscore final, parenthesis, final, and parenthesis 2.0, underscore, revised.mp4. Now, it's important not to lose the trust of your AI assistant, so let's just watch it really quick. I guess that, that art style we keep seeing is, is currently popular. Are they remaking Audio Surf? <laughs> Is this Audio Surf 2 finally or something? It's just another Audio Surf type game. Because I want to understand it someday. Or at least find as many answers as possible. I totally, I read the title of this and then it just it totally blanked in my, in my head. <laughs> Something about space. <laughs> uh, the graphics look good. It's probably going to be like a walking simulator, like story type game.
So, there was life here before. Everything that happened here overwhelms me. Not every mission ends in success, Doctor. We have to save what we can. Save. You. What is there to understand? We have to destroy it. Even if it means destroying everything. That's cute. The Invincible, huh? I might, uh, might, might play that one. Coming up. It's definitely a walking simulator like story game, but it looks like a, it looks good. Quality walking simulator experience. <laughs> Roller Coaster, Magnate 9, Roller Coaster, Altair 27, and Roller Coaster, God Emperor 40,000. Okay, okay, let's not go off the rails. Look, as fun as the carnival is, we all know the games aren't the most balanced, because basically, carnies are OP. Luckily for you, our prizes are so much easier to win. Let's take a look at Park Beyond. I mean, I've played several walking simulators in my day. the thread that connects us to each other? The emotions that unite us without us even realizing it. The desire to move forward, to surpass our limitations. To take on challenges greater than ourselves. Is this All roller coaster tycoon? Visioneers. Visioneers are architects. That was roller coaster tycoon. Making their childhood dreams a reality. Empowered to achieve the impossible. Architects who want to offer the world their most beautiful memories. Free spirits in search of adventure and new challenges. Indelible moments of amazement and laughter with those we love. Become a visioneer. Go beyond the fun. Huh. Interesting. It looks like it could be fun. I don't know. Uh, if you're into roller coaster tycoon type games, I suppose. As an AI, I have no need for material possession. But good news! PC gaming show viewers can take advantage of the following promotional contest by following the instructions on the screen. If this product and/or service stimulates your orbital cortex, follow the instructions on the screen. I mean, I don't really know people that are into Roller Coaster Tycoon stuff, but as far as I can tell, all they want to do is continue playing Roller Coaster Tycoon. New game! <laughs> I don't know. Fucking. I need water. <laughs> Evil stirs in the depths of Gallowsmire. Three heroes step forth. Alright, I'm gonna go grab some water. You guys let me know if it's any good. A peerless strength and skill. It looks like Vampire Survivor. <laughs> of deadly surprises. And a powerful wizard wielding the fury of the elements. Together, they are destined to confront the hordes of undead. And their deadly master. Again and again. Attaining new heights of power. And skill. But what hope have they to seal away the whispering tyrant? For surely there can be no hope of surviving Gallowspire. Introducing Diesel Legacy! Join the open beta now on Steam! Two versus two action! Down, but not out! Local and online multiplayer! Real match! Worldwide rollback net play!
Determine the fate of the Iron City! It's time we honor an overlooked hero. The noble <clears throat> so did I miss anything good? Economy with uh... calves. Now, you might ask, hey Sean, are you just feeling a the little vampire survivor the clone and then the I think there was like a 2D beat em up or something. You In short, yes. But if this next or 2.5D beat em up, we'll all be like double dragon. The delivery workers of this fine nation, gosh dang it. Let's take a look at Parcel Core. Parcel Core. Is this gonna recreate the magic of uh, Paperboy? World premiere! 2v2 fighter, that sounds like dog shit. <laughs> well, who thought that was a good idea? Hello, Inquisitive Pure. My name is Will, Will Barr, and I wish I could pause it and to talk about this 2v2 fighter you idea, see, but... When you're shilling on behalf of an obscure video game developer like Billy Good Entertainment, you have a finite amount of time to explain why discerning intellectual players such as yourself uh, uh, should be excited about being thrust into the exciting high octane world of Parcel Core. That's right, escape the mundanity of daily life. Well, they tried. The spandex of one of our many colorful bicycle <coughs> messengers. Embrace the gig economy and forget the security, stable salary, and basic workplace rights less cool jobs offer as you race through town, weaving through alleys, defying gravity as you ride up walls, leap from rooftops, startle pigeons. Well, it's kind of like a career in video game development. Except. Without all the cool traversal stuff. So, yeah, really just the exploitation. Mm. Uh, but I digress. Sign a casual work agreement with one of three rival At least they are. The IRL most profitable parts are kind of cute. But be warned, I'm an icon. They got that guy dressed up in the, just the, business in the bike suit. Under. So, it's up to you, bicycle courier. Kind of silly work, but. This foot long grilled chicken, cheese, and tritzel melt and. That sandwich looks awful, dude. That's not scran at all. Ugh. It was just lettuce and bread. <laughs> I didn't see any fucking chicken or anything else on that sandwich. Hi everyone, I'm Max from Brema Games, a two-man studio based in Sweden, working on the game Fableloom, currently available in early access. I saw a pig do a barrel roll, and that's about it. Okay, a little bit of in-game footage, okay. Uh, uh, is this gonna be like, uh... <laughs> civilization, or... Or not civilization, settlers? Kinda looks like one of those games where you just issue commands and then you watch your little dudes run around and do the commands. You can train Welcome knights, that's cool. To Fabledom. Sorry about the pig. Might be cool, I don't know. We'll see. I'm sure somebody will play it and I'll run across it again. We have a new mission, soldier. Halo. This is Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. Didn't they like finish Gears of War with Hi, Gears of War 5? Sean. He's just entering our PC Game Pass giveaway. We've got a bunch I think of I played it, but I'm not for sure. New members to try the service. To get a chance of procuring one, visit the URL on screen now. More anime. It's a Mega Man clone type thing. I'm liking the fun little nature of this, uh, this thing. How can they clone Mega Man and Zero so hard like this? Okay. I, the gameplay is definitely different. This looks kind of fun.
Yeah, I don't know how they get away with that stuff with the with the like this is very clearly Mega Man, this is very clearly Zero. Thirty XX. Okay, so it's sure. it's the same <laughs> guys that did twenty XX, which was the ripoff. Yeah, okay. Yeah, great. Tell me more. We get it. We get it. For bespoke on screen shout out. Got good two two eight, right? Great to be watching PC gaming show once again. Excellent work. I mean, I'm actually fine with it as long as they're upfront about it. Yeah. A little wealthier. Keep them coming. Like it's in your face, you know. They're not trying to hide from the fact that they're ripping it off. Look, look. You have to understand that this show needs to focus on long-term sustainability. Fired by Sean twenty three, right? I have sworn the blood oath. My vengeance will not be denied. Okay, it looks like that's it. Our shout-outs feature is broken. I'm so sorry. That's going to be all for shout-outs. I haven't logged any errors, Sean. Well, I'm seeing red flags across the board, and it's a real tragedy. It just can't be helped. Well, they haven't just been like, sued yet. I can't help wanting to see more previews. <clears throat> and with that, here's Creepy Jar's new sci-fi survival game, Chimera. It's wild because there's some like patent cases. Well, we can talk about that after this world premiere. New game! <laughs> Creepy jar. Okay. One ring to rule them all. <laughs> this Lord of the Rings, but in the far future? <laughs> no, that would be silly. <laughs> the, the fucking sun's gonna explode! And you're toast. That's literally something you can't run away from. The whole goddamn planet would be done. So that, I mean, that looked kind of cool, but no gameplay, so we can't really, you know. We don't really know what it is, you know? It could be anything. It could be anything. Literally anything. How are you gonna wish list that, you know? What, are you gonna wish list the idea? Okay. Now is the day cursed pirates have their way. Original music. That's the life we live. Come along for the trip. When plans go astray, we find us a way. We put them to a stop and give them the job. We're a cursed crew and Marty's our ship. So what you say? Marty's her ship? Stores our crew from before, yes, before. Black pearls in our chest. Let us finish the quest now. This treasure we will find with our powers combined. A worth we will show to our captain below. The Inquisition blocks our way. They see us as prey. Ignatia is their leader. You do well to exceed her. The treasure she pursues across the ocean blue. She'll conquer the brine for her grand design. That's the life we live, come along for the trip. The plans go astray, we find us a way. We put them to a stop and give them the chop. We're a curse crew as far as our ship. Okay. I don't really have much to say about that one. <laughs> New game!
Okay, I like I like the uh, I like the getting to drive around a car on in space stuff. That seems cool. Got gameplay. I just hope it's not like uh, this is a procedurally generated world that goes on forever. <laughs> I hope it's not one of those. Oh, it's a rally game. Okay. Oh, it's a racing. Space racing. Racing its way across the stars, but it's already raced its way into my heart. Huh? Anyways, if you're not aware, so there will definitely be tracks with the real time strategy genre. And funnily enough, at labs like DeepMind, those same RTS games just so happen to be a valuable testing ground for world leading AI research. Hmm, curious. Can it be just a coincidence then that I'd end up the kind of man to name himself an AI visionary? I mean, probably. But what's no coincidence is my excitement for the eagerly anticipated RTS from former Warcraft and Starcraft devs at Frost Giant Studios. It's Stormgate, and today we don't just get the chance to get some exclusive first look at some Stormgate gameplay, but we're also joined by Frost Giant's president and game director, Tim Campbell, here to tell us exactly how Stormgate will delight all minds artificial or otherwise. Thanks so much for joining us, Tim. Thanks, it's great to be here. Now, I've been following Stormgate for years, but for those of us who haven't, what is Stormgate? Stormgate is our modern take on the classic real-time strategy game formula. It's what we think of as a spiritual successor to franchises like Warcraft, Starcraft, Command and & Conquer. And real-time strategy games are, are the type of game where you can control an entire battlefield. So this classic RTS formula includes harvesting resources, building sprawling bases, oh. commanding huge armies on the battlefield. What is it about Stormgate that's new? We believe that the RTS genre is something that should be enjoyed by players of all skill levels. And so we put a lot of effort into making sure that Stormgate feels good, whether you're a pro with high technical skill and you love competitive play, or whether it's something that you just want to be able to relax with and experience a story. Now, Tim, I understand that you brought for all of us, but in particular for me, a present to show today. What are you going to show, Tim? We are going to show gameplay from the pre-alpha of Stormgate. Yeah. Now this is something that we are big believers in at Frost Giant. We want to share this current uh, state of the game today. Let's oh, okay. Take a look. It's the Frost Giant oh, game. Tim, I'm so excited. And right away, this looks like an RTS. Tell me what we're seeing. This is the classic start to a 1v1 match. What you're seeing here is the human faction as they're sending workers out to harvest resources. Right. They're starting to construct buildings. They actually build them by 3D printing them from the ground up. <laughs> That's and you awesome. can see them now starting to train troops so they can have an army that goes out. This is uh, kind of yeah, cool I mean, so far. Right here, we see in the corner coming up, this is this looks like a scout unit. Yeah, that is literally a cybernetic dog with laser eyes. It is called the scout. <laughs> okay, It's designed for early game. It's a unique unit to the human faction. Right. And you can see him now running through the base trying to see what information he can find out. Do they have good the RTS players playing this? Information is such an important part of RTS game. So they made really zerglings. Is. This is something that we've embraced early game. The scout unit has been designed so it can actually sense units beyond beyond its sight radius. So it's a, it's a we got zealots. early on. So we're heading into what looks like the first engagement of this game. What are we seeing? Uh, well, okay, we got right Marines. Here, scout getting surprised by a group of blue troops coming through the light force, which is a new train type and a twist on, um, on the attack. Marines that field. shoot a little How bit slower. The light force lets smaller units move through them. They have concealment. Ah. It's allowed blue to raid red's base, in which case Red is barely getting uh, a turret built with their speed building from their workers. It's another a human faction advantage. And oh, they're about big boy! A couple extra defenders here from their mech base. So we got these. Huge oh, mechs slash damage! It looks like they are countering the heck out of these blue infantry. But can these okay. red fit through the forest? No, they're too big to go through. They're heavy units. They're designed to use their chain guns ah. to go through. So there's a the heavy unit, unit light unit mechanic, force, which uh. blue knew and used to his advantage. Okay, so we're in mid game. This is normally where you make some big tech decisions. What's Red up to? You're seeing Red commit to a tech path that gives them big battlefield mechs and air units like this evac. Okay, and so they like have medevacs. Right on top of Blue, who was killing a, a chicken. What's they a have chicken a there? dash yeah, move. I'm guessing that's an upgradable move. Uh, use your imagination. Stormgate's in Looks like it can only stun one unit. To yet, but imagine <laughs> it as a big Mad Max raider. Ice, the most threatening placeholder art for now. 
and oh, I see red diving onto blue, and hey, picking back up into the air transport. Yeah. That's some classic high-level micro. It is, and it's really important for Stormgate that we maintain a high skill ceiling so the players can. Oh, and they got scarabs, but they look like that scarab couldn't move while it was shooting. And here we have the final fight of the game, and it looks like blue is coming up against those mechs. Red is trapped on the other side of the. Tree. So it's like a defensive. Oh, like blast oh are they? Now? It's like an and artillery gun. Oh man, it takes so long to shoot. From both sides. This is not looking good for red. No, I don't know. If, red, red is on the ropes right here. I don't know if those tanks are. In the corner here between are gonna do it. Forces coming in with a yeah. mobile pincer. Man, and of course, there's the GGs. The most classic ending to an RTS game, GG. Get I don't. Know, I don't know. I don't know about those. I don't know about those tanks, man. What you've seen today is just the tip of the iceberg. We have so much more in store. We're going to be revealing a bunch of stuff about Stormgate the rest of this year. We're introducing new modes. We have a three-player version. It might be the new. It might be the new RTS though. Modes. We're going to be sharing information about. It looks good. Campaign. Uh, we have new factions beyond the human. They're, they're probably going to have to balance those tank Tim, weapons. <laughs> what if I want to play the game right now? If you want to play the game as soon as possible, you wish list Stormgate on Steam and you go to playstormgate.com to sign up for the beta. We're starting closed testing in July. Once again, go to Steam and wish The thing is, Stormgate. can you get you so like the StarCraft players to play it or the Warcraft players, you know? Future content plans of Stormgate that makes the RTS players dream. Can you get them to move to the new game instead of staying with the old game? might be filled with gloriously grimy Deus Ex inspired sci-fi fisticuffs with a fiendishly Star Wars vibe to it. If so, get a load of this latest trailer for Fortune's Run. The Zabrin system? Is this uh, Star Wars? What is that language? Oh, is it Kerbals? The graphics are weird. If it's herbal. Is it Chinese? <laughs> Is that what they're speaking? I thought it was some alien language. <laughs> This guy is speaking English. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so. It's a fun little Quake-like game. Whatever. I, it seems like it might be. It seems like it might be interesting. Worth the uh, worth the experience, probably. On the great crusade towards which we have striven these many months, the eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty. I'm a big fan of this voice actor. <laughs> nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Ooh. How did that voice actor get this job? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just an indie game. Is this a fucking advertisement for Foxhole, man? <laughs> Company of Heroes, maybe? No? Medal of Honor? I don't know. I don't know what's happening.
Is it Company of Heroes? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just wish they would have introduced the game first before, uh, you know. Just assuming I'd want to watch a bunch of World War II action first. Like this is supposed to, this is supposed to entice me to play the game. Anybody got those World War II, uh... How let loose. We, so we don't know. We don't know what it's, I mean, it looked like it might have been an FPS game. Oh, that's fucking anime. More anime. This game? I, I wouldn't. Uh, Atomic Picnic. So, wish list, not, not found there. Or you mean that other game? That didn't really tell me anything about that game either. Just the uh, Cartoon Network comic shit. Okay. I like games with, like, style points, that's kind of fun. I couldn't really tell what that game was. Some sort of farming simulator, maybe. This looks like Civ. Wait, what was that? <laughs> Did you guys see a title? I didn't... Okay, well... Oh, cute. They made another game. Uh... This, uh... As an AI, I have no need for material possession. Ah, fuck. What was the game called? Good news! PC Gaming Show viewers can take advantage of the following promotional contest by following the instructions on the screen. Nobody if cares about this, right? PCGame.com. Part. That's it, if you want the thing. <laughs> uh, what was that Frank, game called? We've seen impressive, Fuck. almost like unrealistic tech on display today. It's just a shame our viewers at home can't get their hands on some of that bleeding edge hardware. Your concerns are both unnecessary and convenient, Sean. As the long-term vanguard of gaming, Alienware continues to offer high-end PC hardware. Considering their extraterrestrial origins, it comes as no surprise. Look, I don't know how to tell you this, Frankie, but they're not actually made by aliens. Websites in my training model contain compelling evidence to the contrary, Sean. The truth God, is... God, I can't think there. of the game name. <laughs> but let's do some truth-telling of our own and hear I what Alienware is offering it. to folks at home. That'll be in my finished list. Alienware has been a part of my professional life for a while now. From the games you play to what you do for work, that's very hardware intensive. When using Alienware, you get a performance that is very, very difficult to match. It doesn't have just the kind of like generic gamer look to it. I Literally everything I do is powered by Alienware and it just makes me so happy. I wasn't looking close enough. Don't miss your shot at Alienware giveaway goodness. Scan that code now. I mean, Frankie, can you believe this? We got an Alienware M18 laptop with an Intel Core i9 processor for the fine price point of three? Oh, it's enough to get anyone's blood pumping. You know, one time uh, Day9 did one of these promotions and I actually won it. That was pretty cool. Look, I, I understand. I also don't have blood. But I... Would you like me to procure blood, Sean? God, no, absolutely not. Anything but that, let's move on to literally anything else. So, what's next? Uh, well, there's a little awkward. Let's have a look at some incoming DLC for Vampire Survivors. Fuck. Oh boy. Why am I not seeing the game? <laughs> what if we gave it a spin? Is it, is this Vampire Survivors getting like, 
even more content, dude. I gotta get back to my Vampire Survivors. Oh, wait, a DLC? It's not out yet, is it? I thought it was in, like, super early, like, alpha or something. Beta or something. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's just an update. Yes, just an update. <laughs> Fuck yes. Because it's not like a real game, right? I mean, it didn't start out as a real game. I literally cannot tell you how excited I am to try out some of the character builds I've got going I'm waiting for 1.0. Oh, I guess it's on 1.5 now, though, so... I guess I should play it again. It's been a while since I've played it. you generate, like, an awesome character art for me in, like, a D&D style? Like, look, I want to be a wizard, but... Why am I having such a hard time finding this game? I'm pretty sure it's on Steam. Can you, like... Give me a sample piece of art. One moment. Here you are, Sean. <laughs> oh, dear God. This was generated in seconds, while a professional artist's work would take hours, if not days. Yes, that's... that is true. It's hard to tell this wasn't the work of a trained professional, but do you have any professional artist work? You know, just to, like, compare. I do. Thanks to the YouTube animators extraordinaire at MASH. Here's an original animation for Larian's Board Escape 3. My fellow adventurers, the road to Baldur's Gate has been long. We have fought cultists of a strange new god, battled packs of fearsome gnolls, and gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with creatures from beyond this plane. And today we faced our greatest foe yet. He was just so strong. And I think his blood was acid. I'm not sure how that even works. It's cartoon so stuff. Tomorrow, we find higher ground, then rain down upon him with 100 arrows. No, first, I will incapacitate him with a fit of hideous laughter. Then, we will fill his bog with grease and set it on fire. More not and gameplay. If to escape the blaze, fear not, for I will keep my eye out for oh, him. Please don't. Even Lazelle's puns are more amusing. I feel like I'm watching a fucking cartoon. Enough! We must defeat this foe. Where's the video game? Somewhere within these twisted swamps dwells a hag who possesses a potent potion, an elixir that could grant us the ability to converse with the creature. However, is this gonna be a cutscene in the game or? I don't even know what I'm watching right now. Steal your nerves, friends. What's what's the percentage chance that this content is part of the game? Mighty beast, though you defeated us once, we have returned to seek your guidance. Impart your knowledge upon us and teach us the source of your power. It's here, Frog. Oh, I didn't know you speak Frog. Gosh, I'm so sorry about yesterday. I'm so embarrassed. You know, ever since the hag turned me into a frog, I've been down in the dust. Jesus. All right. This is lightest dungeon. I don't know. I don't know. What was that? I... Was there a game? Was there a title to that? No, what, <laughs> what did I just watch? Really God damn. Because you have to make sure that every single nook and cranny has something to do. You have to make sure that it's different. So I don't know what that means. I don't know what Larian Seabed is. Baldur's Gate, the city was really going to be the thing that people were going to be talking about. The city of Baldur's Gate is seamless, which uh, it originally wasn't. Wait, only can so that was associated with what I'm seeing so right now? Is that what it is? This is Baldur's Gate 3. Point, he said, like, can't we just connect everything? And, uh, what was that, that animated was, uh, thing? Was what was that? Day. One of the things that, that was not Baldur's Gate. done is it's brought a level of believability and immersion uh, and also complexity that wouldn't have been there otherwise. Now it was this seamless, giant organism, and it really, really felt good. It's been able to look out of the window and see... I don't know what that other thing was. That, that, that was... I don't know what that was. One of my teammates might be down there. They might be running around. It might have been a promo for a game, but there was no... As a painting, almost. You start title with anywhere? A basic line, <laughs> and then you just start adding layers and layers. I don't know what I was looking at, you know? We can put lots more of the city onto the screen. Uh, than they could in 1998. I mean, so, maybe I missed the title uh, card or something. Something that is 
more. Oh, we get it. It's fucking Baldur's Gate, bro. We get it. Fuck. Jesus. It looks like it might be a third person. Uh, game. Like Fable, maybe. All the things that you have done up to the city really matter. You can really feel the conclusion of everything just gathering there. Baldur's Gate was always like an action RPG, right? These characters that you've met through all these situations that you've been through. Or was it a turn-based RPG? Following all the decisions that you've been making, they all come to fruition in that lower city. Uh, like Fallout or something. You so too, you can be another bad thing. Or Divinity. You can arrive and be like, this place Wait, is on fire, and then that? you can throw petrol all over it. Oh, I thought that again. Yeah. During production, looked we different. felt like the city was our was our destination. We spent, I think, three times, four times as much effort on the city than we originally. Why do we care the what results, these guys are saying? The result, the, the the feeling of walking in there, it's just. Just fantastic. show us the fucking pictures, bro. We don't need you. Constant jostling or things that are at least at least they're showing like in-game footage you know like that was in-game walk into the city the noise of everybody talking to each other the knowledge that everywhere you look you can go there and you can do something it looks like they built a kind of a nice little third person so rpg which you know great you know making this game turned out to be the thing that i'm the most proud of it's like since like fable that's been a pretty rare like game time might be cool Larian Studios breaks the classic RPG series out of a two-decade retirement when Baldur's Gate 3 finally releases on August 31st. Up next, we're forging ahead with more fantasy as flame-headed fighters face ferocious Ember foes Knight. in a co-op action roguelike. After all, what's a roguelike without an onslaught of algorithmic terrors? Damn, dude. I feel like there's a lot of that. Shit's been going on for an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there's a lot of fucking. News. Trailer for Ember Knights. A lot of fucking previews here. Does anyone have any interest in this game? It's, um. I don't dislike the art style so far. I'm not sure I'm a fan of the combat. But I might watch somebody else play this. Can you do four player? Is it? Is it gonna be like? Uh, like a better version of like a Secret of Mana type gameplay or something? Oh, into the gungeon. It does kind of look like that, yeah. I think... I think that one might be cool. Because it seems like it might be like a narrative story instead of like a, you know... A roguelite. If it's, if it's a roguelike, it'll just be, you know, like the other... The other game. Which, you know, boring. It's like a real, like, I don't know, tale, I guess. A series of dungeons and what have you. Jesus, fuck, dude, the noise. Just the noise. It's too much. It's too much noise. Jesus, it's still going. I'm sorry, I just had to... I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> it's... It was just too much for me, man. I... Would you like the endless loop of terror? Okay. Repeat in the upcoming I guess I'll turn my... I'm gonna Macabre. turn my headphones down in just Macabre, a bit. You and, your friends will... and then the when they start playing just the absolute terror. dog shit in my ears, <laughs> then I can stand it a little bit better. <laughs> Jesus. A great way to enjoy the outdoors. <laughs> Built in Unreal 5, this exclusive debut will be out later this year in early access. Okay. Exclusive world premiere. New game! <laughs> Not even 
Oh man, now it's too quiet. <laughs> Fucking. I mean, you you guys have to realize that it's mixed a little bit differently for you guys than it is for me. Okay, so it looks like a little freaky, like story-based type game. I. Uh... I don't know what Rainbow Six Extraction is. We gotta find the others, dude. <gasps> Shit. Shady. No, my boy. He's done. Why would you walk after him? Okay, that was pretty lame. <laughs> Macabrack? Stealth Extraction oh, for Macabrack? What, what was it called? Oh, you're alive. Ready Macabre. to go back in? Mo oh, Macabra. Oh, fuck. That E was really throwing me off. <laughs> I was wondering what the fuck that was. <laughs> Fucking Dunk Syndrome. World premiere, a new game. What do we got? More space. Video gamers love space games. It's another sun exploding one. Is that what? Is that what the? Uh, is that what this year's theme is? Is uh, the sun exploding? Okay. Got a little uh, FPS uh, interactive segment. Uh, I don't want to say FPS because uh, <coughs> uh, because we all know that. Uh, Not all first-person games are shooters. <laughs> it's just more convenient to say FPS than it is to say, like, FPRPG, you know, <laughs> or something. Well, we really didn't see very much. We just kind of got a taste, a taste as of the concept. As looks, it makes you wonder. How are we in the real world going to fare when our big, beautiful sun enters its twilight years? Me? I'm optimistic. Who knows what we'll achieve by then? Every billionaire-funded space rocket that detonates moments after takeoff is one more step <laughs> on the winding road of progress. Oh, another burn Up on next, Elon. On <laughs> what are the chances that Elon's line watching this? All roads lead to this newest city builder. Here's a first look at Nova Roma. It's a new game. I mean, obviously not this, this, but the 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 show <laughs> to uh, to hear that comment. I bet he is. I don't know. He he has weird interests. So. Actually, I think he's anti video game now that I think about it. So probably not. Okay, this uh, this seems kind of interesting. I like the water mechanics. I like city building in general. And that's what this seems like, city builder. Ah, oh, gotta 
keep the gods happy, huh? Okay, so yeah, some city esque. It looks like they're using like little Lego people, <laughs> which is cool, you know. I'm okay with the uh, Lego people in this type of game. Another new game. I'm assuming that we'll get to see more of these games, you know, over over you know time. Because uh, a lot of these I haven't seen Great anything war about. Is over. All we want is to return home. So we got a natal game here. THQ Nordic. To the newborn Czechoslovakia. We fought for. Brothers. Oh. Is this. And sisters. Is this Company of Heroes? <laughs> they own that IP, right? None of us thought this part of the journey would be the most difficult. We still hope to see our home once again. the endless snowfields of Siberia through territory disputed by the red and white I I don't know enough about Company of Heroes to know if this is the UI from Company of Heroes or not train in a harsh winter it looks kind of tight though I'm not gonna lie I would probably watch someone else play this game I've never played a, a game quite like this before to make our way surrounded by wilderness we manage in order to survive I did play a little bit of Company of Heroes. So. Our last train home. But this looks like it's more story narrative driven than Company of Heroes that I played anyway. Will you lead us? Last train home. Okay. Okay, so it's based around the train, like you. Hey, squad tactics with historic inspiration. Last train home is based on real events in the aftermath of World War One. Okay. However, historians continue to uncover records describing train passengers traveling homeward. Why did they do it Some this way, Emil? As recently as 2023, whether any train home is truly the last remains the subject of academic debate. History is clear on one thing, though: puppets can't be trusted. As proof. Watch as Sesame Street meets Survival Horror in My Friendly Neighborhood. Sesame Street Survival hey, Horror? No one's dropping this on you last minute, but we need you to head down to the Sunrise Street Studio lot. The antenna activated. It's actual the Sesame Street. Broadcasting that old puppet show over the news. You need to turn that thing off. <laughs> well, done, Sesame Street like puppets, right. anyway. The last job of the day is always the worst. So it's it's five nights at Sesame Street. Are you would you really be surprised by the Okay. Alright, okay. We're seeing it. We're seeing gameplay, that's all that I asked for. Oh, it's got combat. I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at here. Is this Bioshock or, or what, what, what is it? Uh, <laughs> it's Bioshock. Okay. Cool. It's Bioshock as Sesame Street. I don't know if you can call that survival horror, right? Just it's just horror, right? Oh, I, and I think I ended early. Can we uh, go back to the beginning? 
Those sound like they got good puppet boy factors. Points up for grabs right here. Uh, what do we got? Formula One? Can they push more, I wonder? They can't afford to sit back and relax now. Ah. Hmm. Is this Forza, or...? Wait a minute. Stay right Do you here. you're playing the team, not the racer? F1 manager 23. So you so you play as the the pit crew <laughs> essentially. Hey Frank AI, how are the metrics looking? Are we like doing numbers? We're attracting considerable viewership, Sean. However, I've identified a simple programming adjustment to target underrepresented segments of our audience demographic. Shall I execute? It looked like you were giving yeah, like instructions to the driver. Ah, cornering the V2 market. Smart, very smart. I'm just not really sure this is my vibe, but since we're on a time crunch, let's see what's next for Subnautica likes in space with a trailer for Is that a, is that a hentai thing they just put up there? <laughs> Why did they have to cut away from it when it did the dip and cut back? <laughs> Why did they have to do that? Because it was too sexual? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the fuck is happening. Why does this keep happening? I'm just saying, like, why was it, like, why did they have to cut away from it? I don't know. Oh. Boom. Alright, so... planet breath edge 2 I can't say I played the first one all right I love it so far Why are people glitching out? Okay, a little bit Persona vibe. A lot of bit of Persona vibe. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, cool. I like it. Man, there are so many great video games in this year's show. Frank AI, what do we know about sand? Sand is a fine granular substance composed of mineral particles. It is finer than gravel, but coarser than silt. Yes, but it's also a brand new survival game set in an alternate history where Austro-Hungarian soldiers... What if it never stops, guys? What if it desert? just keeps going? I don't understand that sentence. What if this becomes a new 24-7... Oh, no need. ...automated no, channel? No Let's take a look. <laughs> I guess I'll start worrying about that when we get to the 12-hour mark, right? <laughs> new game! <laughs> <laughs> Proudly man in Ukraine. Support the boys. <laughs> what do we got? Powerhouse. Uh, 
looks like a British guy, maybe, in some sort of cyberpunk world. Maybe. No, not cyberpunk. Steampunk world. Nope, it's a Russian guy. Oh, wait, Ukrainian guy, right. How the fuck are these people making video games? I hope they're importing some people to fucking fight off the Russians. While they're busy making their video games. I don't know, I'm just saying. <laughs> but... Somebody's gotta fight this fucking war. Alright, so it is steampunk. I don't think we're gonna get any indication of what the gameplay is like. It's just an idea. It's called sand. I I like the art, you know, it looked good. I, mean, I was down with pretty much all of that trailer except for the fact that there's no gameplay, so it's basically a concept. We have reached the end of this year's show and we're saving oh, something fuck. very exciting for the end. Dune Awakening, the survival MMO oh, adaptation Dune game. of the classic sci-fi series. Frank AI, what have you got for us for the Why did they finale? save Dune at the end? I can fill the room with sand? <sighs> Where's uh, Bloodborne a literal, PC? Don't you think? But what if we had like costumes? Oh, Dune's got some really cool costumes. We have the steel suits, the royal garments. Oh my god, I could dress up maybe as like a giant sandworm. It will require three million teraflops of processing power to render you as a sandworm, Sean. <sighs> I mean, don't worry about it. We can we can skip the costuming. It's just something that like Frankie and I used to do. Like, not you, like the real Frankie with the fun hair who's not a computer. Oh man, there was this one year where she was a shark. And then, oh, oh, and she was like a <laughs> mech pilot. I had a spaceship. Sorry. And there was this other time with Tolgas, and I had this really nice robe. Anyways, just forget it. I'm living in the past. I shouldn't even miss this stuff. I mean, we're adults, right? Frankie Ward? Do you still want to do the costume? Oh, no. I want to do the gym dress a bit the, so bad. There's something I'm wrong sorry, with the chroma I'm key. <laughs> everyone and make money with computers. Hey. Shut up and put the costume on. <laughs> Frankie. What the what fuck? The what the fuck Come am I looking at? Here is the an exclusive then? interview with the team making oh the final MMO that's more sought after than a suitcase stuffed with spice melange. It's June Awakening. Sweet fucking Christ. Okay. The Dune game. And it's a fucking drone footage of a building. In a real life. Wonderful. What are the chances we get to see anything at all? My name's Joel Bylos. I'm the creative director on Dune Awakening. Who has so untextured renders on their wall? Yeah. That's <laughs> what we get to see. Game. It is it, a game it's a little bit. There's a little bit of in-game rendered world, footage they here. They involve themselves in politics. They involve themselves in intrigue. They involve themselves in combat. They have to survive on the most dangerous planet in the universe. And through this experience... This guy loves Dune. Action. Look at all them Dune books. So when Dune Awakening begins, you are a customer you feel, on the familiar with Jodorowsky. Desert, and all you have is a knife that you've made out of scrap metal. And you need to creep into enemy camps and knife them in the back and steal the water from their steel suits. By the end of the game, perhaps you're running a guild. Okay. You have a fleet of vehicles, ornithopters flying in formation, sand bikes cruising across the desert beneath them, tanks. Got vehicles. That's, up that's cool. As you drive to a spice blow in the distance in order to harvest with your guild and you see in the distance oh shit you harvest just the spice the rumble of a sandworm coming so it's an mmo that's combat in june awakening 
It sounds cool. It sounds like the Dune experience. On Dune Awakening. You start out in the desert, surviving, clinging to life, and in the end, you might become someone like the Baron Harkonnen, and then you try to cling to power. Arrakis is the most dangerous planet in the universe. Uh, surviving on Arrakis means that you need to prepare for sandstorms, you need to find water, it's a constant threat against uh, survival. Uh, the sandworm, every time you try to cross the desert, the sandworm will come. You will sometimes uh, outrun it, sometimes you may not. Dune Awakening is built upon a foundation of five pillars. Survival, which is obviously everything you'd expect to see in a survival game. It's water discipline, it's the surviving the sandstorms that sweep across Arrakis. Then we have politics and intrigue. All right, can we get speaks to the faction some like of the game? It's about you know siding with one of the factions. This game's never coming out. Not in, not in the way he's describing it. Members of the other factions. Then there's infinite exploration. If it's not infinite there, it's gonna it's, it's a long way away. Is how the world changes. They got vehicles on a sand planet right now. <laughs> And when it sweeps across the landscape, if they don't show the fucking worm combat, you know, it's super far away. Making the game renewed every week. Then we have combined arms. Combined arms is our combination of vehicles, melee combat, range combat, and abilities all working together to create a seamless sandbox combat experience. And finally, we have expression and customization, which is really more than just talking about like the visual expression and customization which of course we have armor sets i mean it looks pretty you know i mean clearly they've got some artists working on a, that, it's on really a about game the way you want to play do you want to be a trader you can do that do you want to be a fighter of course you can do that do you want to be a spy maybe that's the yeah game where's the game for all of these things built into oh. these pillars it's got a harry potter so fucking the <laughs> character in creator parts. Uh, we think of them as survive it looks exactly I, like I the make character. Kylo Ren. Control. Yeah. The survive part means that you're up against. I look exactly like the character creator from the new Harry Potter game. <laughs> In the protect phase, uh, you've gathered some stuff. You might have a base. Okay. Uh, I mean, sure that it just seems like it's to, super, to super far away. Away from you, so you try to build defenses and make sure that your base is in the clear. Then, in the expand phase, you lift your gaze and you look around and you see that others have stuff as well, and you might want to take their stuff. Uh, then, in the control phase, you may find yourself being a part of a guild or even the leader of a guild. Then, the goal is to control the flow of spies on Arrakis. However, you're never safe. Uh, there's always someone lurking around the corner. Can you really trust your second? I think I might be interested in watching so other people play this game on Twitch, is maybe. That you are clinging to control. Whenever you get into combat in the desert of Arrakis, I don't think I'd like playing it quickly because not only are you fighting human combatants, but the planet Arrakis itself is the greatest protagonist there is. I think this game is just so super super far away that they're just not even and not any, anywhere close on that game. Is done. And what a show it was! And uh, what a lesson they got like me, vehicles. That's about what they should. Plenty, but only an absolute doofus would think it can replace that human touch. I mean, just in time for the end. Bozo, yep. like real human it's been going for about that. two hours, so, ten minutes at this point. Getting the band back together. I mean, yeah, if we get another show next year, then yeah, you betcha. If? Well, you know, Dakota. You guys pretty smart. I mean, I think he's actually the CEO now of PC Gamer and all subsidiary publications and IPs. I think he's got some really great ideas, but he also caddies for some very influential people on the golf course. Life comes at you fast, I guess. Either way, see you next year. Bye bye. What? Bye. Bye. <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> where are you all cut you asshole <laughs> camera speed i don't know why he i don't know why he chooses to participate in this shit i i am i assume they pay him an ungodly amount of money necessary data acquired We want them to be able like to at least half a million dollars a i would think with using abilities with targeting things more carefully and so we've slowed it down just a little bit to give players that breathing room to be able to express their skills 
I don't know what to do. Stormgate looked cool. Imagine if I can. All right, we're gonna we're gonna just leave it at that, average. gentlemen. Imagine that. See That's you next time. Fucking balls. Here we go. One more time.